Hi guys. Okay, let's look at the energy of combustion per gram. When methane is combusted in a constant volume kilometer and when hydrogen is combusted in a constant volume kilometer. So we already talked about in the previous lecture, uh, what does the constant volume kilometers look like? So just to give a recap again, this is a sealed, perfectly insulated container in which there is a reaction while made up of steel and inside the reaction while we have an ignition wires which ignite the reactions. Okay, now this is since it's a perfectly sealed container, none of the reactants in the form of gases can escape. They remain trapped inside. So now we are trying to measure how much amount of heat that is being released in this reaction. So what happens is that the amount of heat that is released is captured by the water that surrounds the steel chamber. So that amount of heat that the water absorbs is reflected in the change in temperature, which we see by the readings from the thermometers. Then we have a stirrer, which basically distributes the heat all around the chamber. So we get, you know, perfect reading. So this is the makeup of the constant volume kilometers. According to the first law of thermodynamics, the amount of heat and the, the work done by the system is equal to the energy of that particular reaction. But since the gases are perfectly enclosed in the system, so the gases are not doing any work, even though they want to expand, but they can't, they're trapped inside. So therefore there is no change in volume, which that is why it is called constant volume kilometers. So the change in volume is zero. And when the change in volume is zero, the work done is zero because work is P times Delta V. So now when we have removed the work out of the equation, we can focus completely on the amount of heat that the systems are releasing. And the systems in this case is the reaction that is present inside the steel chamber. Now for all exothermic reactions, the value of Q is going to be a negative number. So negative number basically is just to signify the amount of heat that is released, okay? now. Based on this knowledge, we have actually also factored in how much of the heat the kilometer is going to be absorbing. And not just the kilometer, there are parts of the kilometer, as you have seen, that also absorb the heat. And so that has already been factored and measured, and we already know it. And it comes, uh, you know, through several other experiments, you can actually identify how much of the heat the kilometer is absorbing. But that's regardless for this experiment. In this experiment, in, this, in, this, in these problems, in this video, we are given the heat capacity of the kilometer, 11.3 kilojoules per degree Celsius. Okay, now we are given two scenarios. One is methane and the other is hydrogen. And we're trying to see when we take methane, 1.50 grams, how much of the heat is being released? And when we take hydrogen, 1.15 grams, how much of the heat is being released? The change in temperature for methane, 7.3 degrees Celsius. The change in temperature for hydrogen is 14.3 degrees Celsius, okay? So now let's look at the calculations in which we look at the energy that is released in the combustion. So here are your reactions. Here is your reaction, um, which is basically methane reacting with oxygen at a very high temperature you know, and that's combustion, it's going to release energy and we are trying to identify how much of this energy is being released. And carbon dioxide and water in their gaseous states are the products. So next is hydrogen, 1.15 grams hydrogen, combustion with oxygen, gives you water and large amount of energy. Now, what is that energy? How much of that energy is released? So let's look at the calculations now. So the energy released in the combustion of a 1.50 grams of methane is, we know the formula, E is equal to the heat capacity of the calorimeter times the change in temperature. So here the heat capacity of the calorimeter is 11.3 kilojoules per degree Celsius. And the change in temperature is given as 7.3 degrees Celsius. So this equates to 83 kilojoules. 
Okay, so in other words, we see that this 83 kilojoules of heat is being released by 1.15, oh sorry, 1.50 grams of methane. 1.50 grams of methane. So this is your now a conversion factor. Okay, so for one, for 1 1.0 grams of methane, how much would that be? So this times 83 kilojoules over 1.50 grams of methane. Okay, and this comes out to be 55 kilojoules per grams of methane. This is methane. So this is one scenario. Next is, let's look at when we use 1.15 grams of hydrogen. How much of the energy is released? So that energy again is equal to um, the heat capacity of the calorimeter times the change in temperature. Okay, and so we have the heat capacity of calorimeter as given to us 11.3 kilojoules per degree Celsius. Okay, times the change in temperature given to us is 14.3 degrees Celsius. Okay, so when you multiply the two, you get 162 kilojoules. Now keep this in mind that this 162 kilojoules is being released from 1.15 grams of hydrogen. So for 1.0 grams of hydrogen, how much of the heat is that? So this comes out to be 141 kilojoules per grams. Okay, now 141 kilojoules per gram. So this is from hydrogen versus the methane. So let's just write down these two here. So for methane, we are getting one sorry, 55 kilojoules from one gram. Okay, so for one gram of methane, let me just move this up. So one gram of methane is giving you 55 kilojoules per gram. And for, um, or for one gram of hydrogen, we are getting 141 kilojoules per gram. Okay, so which one is more? Obviously, hydrogen is giving us more energy. So remember, this is basically methane and hydrogen in comparison, we, we see that hydrogen might be a more efficient as a fuel because when you compare these, you know, from one gram, you get 2.5 times more energy from uh, hydrogen than from methane. So remember in the first, um, one of the earlier videos when we talked about the um, first law of thermodynamics and we were trying to figure out like, why are we going to use all these energies or where are we using these, this information that comes from you know, the theory on the th first law of thermodynamics. So one of them is understanding the different forms of energy, alternate you know, energies. So this is where you know, this type of information can be used in determining which is a more efficient fuel in a way, you know, so clearly from this, it appears to be hydrogen is more. But anyways, I hope that this was easy and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.